Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can create anything from your 3D printed designs using silicone rubber and your 3D printer. What I chose to create is a cement tray that has been quite popular on social media lately. This can be used as a decorative item around your house or a surface to burn candles or hold your jewelry. As you can see here, I did create it on Fusion 360, one of my favorite CAD design programs, and it was super easy to do. It only took me around half an hour to do each. Um, some came with more challenges. Since I am new, there is a bit of a learning curve, but um, overall, everything printed out great. I tried to print it out as finely as possible so I can get the most detail out of my silicone rubber molds and it turned out great. This is how the prints turned out. I was quite happy with them actually. Due to its low layer height, it took around 10 hours for the tray and here I'm just gluing down the windows to make sure no rubber slides out through the cracks. I designed it this way for easy removal when the rubber is cured and I think this is probably the best way to go about it through my experience um, so you don't have to break the exterior wall of your print and you can reuse these mold bases. The silicone rubber that I use is called Smooth On Mold Star 30 and it's a platinum silicone rubber. It picks up on all of the details of your prints and it's ideal for home, art, or industrial projects. I especially like this rubber because of its rigidity and its long pot life being around 45 minutes long. Some rubbers start to cure very quickly which doesn't give you enough working time and this could lead to a waste of product and a big mess. Overall this rubber takes around 6 hours to cure and a vacuum chamber is not necessary. Uh, this was also another selling point for me because I did not want to invest in a vacuum chamber. A trick that I do to get rid of the air bubbles is to do a high pour which is about half a meter above the print to just make sure all the bubbles pop uh, before it hits the actual model. Overall I find that this rubber is very easy to work with and all you have to do is combine equal parts of A and B, give it a good stir, and pour high above your prepared model. I also recommend going really slowly as you can see here the process does take around five minutes just because you want to make sure that all the bubbles pop along the way. I found that this is the best technique without actually having the vacuum chamber and no complaints so far it is definitely worth it. supposed to be soaps. I did spray some satin finish spray just to kind of remove some of the layer lines. I did print this very finely at 0.15 millimeter layer height so it is definitely fine already but I just wanted to kind of touch it up, put some satin spray on there to kind of give it a sheen and start making my mold. So if you're wondering, this is what I use to kind of get that shiny finish. And be sure to spray this outside because it, it stinks. One thing that I definitely recommend is getting um, mold release. And this really helps when you have something that is um, not necessarily fused to the bottom of the mold, but um, something that may be a little difficult to wrap from the mold. And I find that this works really well. So we're just going to spray a bit on the top there. So mold release agents are typically used to prevent a substrate bonding to a molding surface and this is especially useful when you're doing two-part molds. It's not required to use with PLA but it's also good to have just in case. We're going to give that a few minutes to dry but in the meantime we're going to fuse this little uh, door that we have here. Uh, I made this extra slot uh, open just so it's easier to grab the mold. It definitely is difficult when you don't have that just because you have no area to kind of go underneath the rubber and pull it upwards and release it. And also the mold release helps with that as well. I'm gonna take some hot glue and just go along the edges. So 
So as you can see here, the mold turned out pretty perfectly. The demolding process for this specific mold was really easy because it wasn't too big, it wasn't too deep, so I was able to pull it out pretty easily. The base that I'm using here is Cement All and I just purchased this from Home Depot. I would suggest to wear mask and gloves and if you can, do this process outside. Cement has a particle called crystalline silica and it's found in materials such as concrete and cement and breathing in these fine particles can produce lung damage so it's really important to take proper safety measures and wear PPE and be as safe as possible. The concrete pigment that I'm mixing right now is from Color Direct, and this is a company in the United States and they supply a wide range of colors. The one that I'm using is called Terracotta and it's definitely one of my favorites. The black and gray device that I'm using is called an oscillator machine and this is commonly used in the dental field. Its main purpose is to essentially vibrate the oxygen bubbles that are trapped in your mold it's not required to use an oscillator, but it is definitely a preference because the air bubbles definitely affect the final look of your product. As you can see here, I'm tapping it as well just to kind of assist the oscillator because sometimes it's a little slow at getting there, but I typically only need to leave it on for about two minutes. This particular cement tray that I made was not used with any concrete pigments. I actually just used black acrylic paint, mixed it with the concrete, and it made this really cool design. And the concrete doesn't take too long to set. I do leave it for around eight hours, but um, you could probably get away with three or four hours, but uh, I like to let it set completely. As you guys can see, this was the final product for the soaps. I'm so happy with how they turned out because I was a little bit worried about showing the layer lines within the final product, but this wasn't an issue, especially since I have sandpaper to do the post-processing. It's been really helpful to kind of smooth out the edges and get rid of any imperfections. So now I'm just integrating the Cricut into my little procedure here and this is because I got the Cricut but I have been underestimating its abilities. It's such a cool machine, it can do a number of different things and the fact that I can take a photo off the internet or even draw one up myself and create this awesome template to paint or trace over or just use as a vinyl sticker you can do endless amount of things and in next week's video I'm going to show you a way to kind of maximize the Cricut within your design projects to kind of give it that extra touch that's personalized or just out of the ordinary. I feel like there's so many things you can do with this machine that it kind of gets overwhelming and you don't know where to start but I just wanted to start integrating it into my projects to show you guys how cool of a machine it is. I never really intended on going this far with this project but ever since I designed it and printed the um, mold out and created the actual silicone mold it just motivated me to see where I can take this project to the next level and I thought this would be a really cool trick. As you can see I used transfer tape, super easy to just transfer the vinyl and it was such a quick and easy process and it really adds that special touch. And obviously it's not practical so if you're planning to manufacture something with a design that you created I would definitely recommend either like a stencil or um, some sort of stamp um, which would be a lot easier but to just prototype and see what you want to do I find that this is such a great method because it really helps you dictate what design you want on your product and it's super fun to do like I had so much fun doing this <laughs> and uh, if you want to do personalized projects for people it's super easy to just either do a mock-up on Procreate and uh, cut it out with the Cricut or do something on Illustrator and import it into the Cricut design space. 
like I said, the opportunities are endless. The amount of designs and creative items that you can make is endless. And the fact that you can make nearly anything from fusion and print it out and personalize it is such a good feeling because it allows you to have so much creative freedom and do what you want. So if you have an idea, just make it happen and yeah, show the world. After using concrete, it is especially important to use a protective finish. The one that I chose is called Polycrylic Protective Finish and it is a clear, crystal clear, ultra fast drying protective top coat and it kind of gave it an element of glossiness and just smoothness and it filled in any imperfections that were going on with the concrete and it really gave a nice finish. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 because I wasn't expecting for the colors to be so amplified after putting the protective layer on top but um, this is made for furniture and wood specifically so it really gives it that nice rich touch so if you're looking to get a protective top coat varnish I definitely recommend this one Thank you for watching today's video. I would appreciate it if you guys liked and subscribed. I am looking forward to sharing more of my projects from Fusion. And if you guys have any ideas of what I should do next, I would love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get to them in the near future. Um, but until next time, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you guys next week.